everybody, welcome back. We're reading the Sealed Nectar. We're on page 499, the paragraph titled, The Messenger Reaches the Trail. As soon as Allah's Messenger, peace be with him, reached the trail, Ali bin Abu Talib went out and filled his water container with the water from Al-Mihras. Al-Mihras is said to be hollow, a concave rock containing plenty of water. Ooh, it might have that nice minerally taste to it. It was also said that it is a water spring at the Hud mountain. Anyway, Ali brought that water to Allah's messenger to drink. Finding that it smelled bad, he refused to drink it, oh, but only washed the blood from his face and poured some of it over his head, saying, Allah's wrath is great on those who injured his messenger's face. Sa'al said, By Allah, I know who washed the wound of Allah's messenger, and who poured out water for him, and what substances his wound was treated with. His daughter Fatima washed it, whereas Ali poured water out of the container. When Fatima realized that the water increased the flow of blood, she took a piece of straw mat, burnt it at a little, and sucked stuck it into the wound so blood ceased flowing. Oh. Muhammad bin Maslama brought him fresh water to drink. The Prophet, peace be with him, drank and supplicated Allah to provide him with good owing to the wounds and their bad effects on his body. Allah's Messenger, peace be with him, led his followers in the Duhur prayer in a sitting posture and so did the Muslims. When the preparations of the idolaters for departure came to an end, Abu Sufyan went up the mountain and called out, Is Muhammad among you? They did not answer him. Then he asked, Is Ibn Abi Kuhafa Abu Bakr among you? They did not answer. He asked again, Is Umar bin al-Khattab among you? They did not answer him. For the Prophet, peace be upon him, forbade them answering him. He is only asked about those three. That is because he and his people knew quite well that the call to Islam depended to a large degree on those men. Oh yeah, so like you don't want your main movement people to get murked. Abu Sufyan then said, As for those three, we have relieved you of. Umar could not help but talking. So he said, O oh, enemy of Allah, those whom you have just mentioned, I tell you that they are still alive. Allah has maintained what you hate. Abu Sufyan answered, The mutilation of your dead is something I did not order it, but it did not displease me. Then he shouted, Hubal an idol, let it be sublime. Whoa. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, Why do you not reply? What shall we say? They asked him. Say, Allah is more sublime and exalted and mightier as well. Oh, that's a good response. He said, al Uza, i.e. an idol, is ours, but you have no Iza might. Why do you not reply? The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, What shall we say? They inquired. He said, Say Allah is our protector, but you have no protector. Sometimes I just, if you really look how it is so weird that people would think that a speared resides in a, in a statue if they made the argument that the statues were symbols of reminders you'd be like okay but to actually think that if you were mumbling something to a statue that it would somehow do something for you i think we all learn though right there was a time when i put uh, roses by a statue of jesus outside a catholic church and touched the foot and looking back on that i just see how really stupid that was but hindsight is twenty twenty, right? Abu Sufyan said, Well done. Today is the day of revenge for the day of Badr. This for that. War is attended with alertness success. No, al alternate success. Umar's reply was, No, they are not the same. Our dead are housed in paradise, but yours are in the fire. Then Abu Sufyan said, Come on, Umar. Allah's messenger, peace be upon him, said, Go and see what the matter is. He
he went there. Abu Sufyan asked him, I ask you by Allah's name to tell me the truth. Have we killed Muhammad? Umar said, By Allah, no. And now he is listening to your words. He said, For me, you are more truthful than Ibn Kamiya. Ibn Kamiya. And even more reliable. I like these dialogues back and forth. The appointment to meet again at Badr. Ibn Ishaq said, when Abu Sufyan and those who were with him were leaving, he called out notifying, We will meet again at Badr next year. Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, said to one of his men, Say, yes, it is an appointment for both of us. Ooh, that's cool. It's because, like, that's a good reply because someone's like, even today, if someone was like, Hey, meet me at the park after school because we usually used to say that to each other or behind an alley or somewhere and you're like yeah cool I'll meet you there and like when you accept an invitation of for a brawl it's a little bit more of like you're not being afraid but I but this is a noble response right it's like it's an appointment for both of us and when using the terminology of appointment is like it's scheduled I'll be there you know you know Verifying the movement of the idolaters. Later on, Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, dispatched Ali bin Abi Talib to track them. He said to him, Pursue them and see what they are going to do and what they intend. If they dismount horses and ride on camels back, this means that they are leaving for Mecca. But if they ride horses and lead camels unmounted, they are headed for Medina. By the one in whose hand my soul is, if they attacked Medina, I would march to them there and I would fight them. Ali said, I went out and tracked them to see what they were up to. I saw them mounting camels and leaving the horses unmounted. They were heading for Mecca. Is it because the camels were better at certain terrain? I wonder, is it like, if they would have took the horses, it would have been a more smoother route. They would have said the camels would be more sandy hillis route since their their feet spread out more. Checking on the dead and wounded. After the departure of the Kurishites, people went out to check the identity of the dead and wounded. Za'ad bin Thabit said, Allah's messenger, peace be upon him, sent me on the day of Uhud to seek Sa'id bin Arabi and said, when you see him, say, Peace be upon you, from me, and say to him, Allah's Messenger says, How do you feel? Sa'ad said, I started checking the dead until I came across Sa'ad when he was dying, with about 70 sword wounds, plus a spear and an arrow in his body. So I said, O Sa'ad, Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, sends you his greetings, and says, Peace be upon you. Tell me how do you feel? Sa'ad said, And let peace be upon Allah's messenger too. Tell him, I smell the scent of paradise. And tell the helpers, my people, you shall not be excused before Allah if Allah's messenger is hurt and your eyes are blinking. Then he died. Some people talk about things they smell before death. Some say like an irony smell. They come across Al-Usarim, Amir bin Thabit, whom they had already urged to embrace Islam, but refused. They saw him among the wounded on the verge of close death. What has he come here for? We have parted with him, and he was still too obstinate to accept Islam as his religion. They asked him, What made you come here? Is it out of zeal to defend your people, or is it because of an inclination to Islam? He said, It is certainly an inclination to Islam. I believe in Allah and His Messenger. I have fought with Allah's Messenger till I got what you see. And then he immediately died. They told Allah's Messenger, peace be with him, about him. Hearing that, he said, He is one of the inhabitants of paradise, although he had not offered one single prayer. Narrated by Abu Haraya. Whoa. Mm. 
see that's kind of cool because it kind of makes you feel you don't know who's going and who's not so like us so don't say who's going and who's not if you don't know their heart right mm. Kazman who was found among the wounded fought heroically and killed seven or eight idolaters that's a uh, Kazman seems like he he knows how to s swing that sword fam whoa 